it's time once again for Let's Go Trophy Hunting, following up what is probably our best hunt of the series so far, where we shot a piebald whitetail buck and a 58.1 scoring coyote. So hopefully we can continue with that level of luck as we head out on Red Feather Falls looking for Roosevelt Elk. Now, one thing that I would like to do is maybe try to improve some of these whitetail. I mean, we have things like the 152 from Settler Creeks, and we could definitely do far better. And I think on Red Feather Falls, we have a decent chance of doing that. So the way that we're going to approach this today is actually going up through from the Southern Lodge, hunt for whitetail, eventually get into elk territory, and just see what we run into. And starting off with perhaps a perfect opportunity to get some usage out of our sidearm. We have the 45 Stallion today, and to be honest, it's really not the best pistol in the game. We have gone through all of these slots for handguns in the lodge, so we're going back through things we've used, and I wanted to use this one on a map with moose because it is one thing that we can actually take with it fairly reliably. It's a small moose. I didn't want to track it from a cable back shot, so I think that's a good way to get going. Obviously, a hard shot there, even broadside, which is kind of better than I thought the 45 might do. I thought there was a chance it would end up being body. But our loadout then is obviously the cable back bow, the 45 that we just saw, and then our inline muzzleloader, which we've not used in this series yet, and I think it might be fun to carry on this map. You know, this kind of unintentionally works out. We have another pretty small animal, this time a white-tailed buck, and it just goes back to probably even in this series years ago. One thing I would always say when we had hunts that started out this way is that getting the does and small bucks out of the way early just leaves more room for the big ones towards the end. He's got two stickers right below his proud tines, but going into this video, I was thinking about way the hunter's recent success and just due to his realism, I think that's one of the reasons it's gotten to where it is. And it just kind of made me realize how kind of ahead of its time the Hunter Classic was, and that's probably why it still holds up today. Almost 14 years, I think next month is 14 years for the Hunter Classic's existence. Still a really fun game. We're out here making hard shots on Whitetail in February of 2023, but I guess uh, 56 score. Kind of go with the old trend, get that one out of the way, and hope for bigger bucks later in the hunt. Now we're getting a little somewhere 170 to 195 on that whitetail buck, and I I couldn't tell, but I think he's a 7x7, so he's most likely to end up in the 170s, but the frame looked big. There's maybe a chance we can get one of those rare, like, 180 7x7s, but I think we'll just kind of sit back. I don't want to crawl up to that hill and risk him kind of beating us at the top, so we'll just sit here and bring him in. And hopefully we have something to put on the wall already. Now, that could be a problem for multiple reasons. I do see a sticker there too, but pretty good time length on that guy. We have the muzzle that are loaded with the 50 caliber bullets, which are not ethical for Whitetail. So we got to get around that dough. The only thing right now that we can shoot that buck with is the cable bag. And there's no way we're getting the muzzle loader loaded with the other rounds. So I think we're going to be okay, but might end up with a lengthy track, because it's looking like there's a chance we'll be taking a longer than ideal shot. I think as soon as he gets into that opening, we're going to go for it. He's probably in the area of 20, 25 meters. If we can just kind of, oh, even better, <laughs> right into the spy, we aim too high. That saves us some time. He does have a really good frame, though. He's going to lose maybe an inch or inch and a half on that sticker, and he is a 7x7, but... That's a pretty darn good buck, considering we're just kind of passing through Whitetail ter territory quickly. Spine one, 176 score. I think that makes it our second biggest buck of the series so far, and that actually does include going all the way back to when we were looking for a 200 Whitetail. In this series, I think we had a 177, and never better than that. We ultimately killed the 200 on stream, not during one of the trophy hunting videos, but... Pretty cool, that'll be a, a much better addition to the lodge than the 152 we looked at. But it just always seems to be a thing. Either we end up getting our kills first thing in the morning where the lighting's not good for the trophy shot, or we're spending three or four hours just to find something to get in the lodge. But I guess we called in another doe, or two? So there were three does and a decent buck here. I mean, there's no positive to shooting that doe, honestly, because we're going to spook the other. I think we'll just kind of sneak our way out of here and let them go. You know, if our main goal had been Whitetail on this hunt, there's no way two of our first three bucks would have been this solid. But yet we're after Elk, 
So we're having no problem finding some decent bucks and dropping them. For that matter with the cable bag. None of these things are normal for this series, but I don't know, maybe like a low 160s, high 150s? Got somebody even tying hard shot again. 153, so technically what we could do is replace the, I think, low 170s with the 176 that we just shot, and then make a one inch upgrade from the 152 to the 153, but I don't think that's exactly worth it. Nice, solid start though. Hopefully we can replicate that success with the elk as we move north. So finally, right about an hour into the hunt, we have our first bull, 130 to 180. Now there are some others coming in. There's a cow there, and then another bull kind of in that same size range. So I think we probably just go ahead and take this guy, though the angle is gonna be a little bit tougher now. I'd like him to stop again, but we'll just try to put that into a lung. I think it will be. And it is going to spook the ones in the back. There potentially could have been one more. That guy stayed, which was kind of the hope. I mean, if there is a fifth elk in the group, it should still be coming in. And honestly, it may have just been four in the group. That or another one spooked that we couldn't see. Got a drop time and everything. Try to get that into the heart. That would have definitely saved us some time, but... This one is definitely a long shot, so for now we'll mark that, because I'm thinking the other one should be along as well, and it should be easier to track it down first, though that is just not going to be the case. That was a body shot, so it's probably going to take in the area of 20-22 minutes to bring that down, and it's certainly not going to take that long to track our long shot one, so we could approach this a couple of different ways. I think we'll just go ahead and track down the long shot one, and then maybe we'll hunt around for 10 minutes or so and come back to it. At least the second one didn't make it all that far, maybe 150 meters. Got that nice drop time there too, but right long at seven and a half meters, 173. And I kind of think what we're gonna do is just fast travel here to this tent, maybe sit here, call for elk, deer, whatever comes in for, like I said, 15 minutes, something like that. And then we can just go back and track them down and maybe not a bad idea as we got a buck run as soon as we fast travel. Not quite up to the standard of our last two bucks, but at least still average 9 to 115. And the one thing I would say is we need to be pretty careful not to complicate the situation by causing another track. So we'll either try to get him in the neck there. I don't know where else to aim that, so we'll just try to center it. That'll be just fine. There was a doe coming in as well. And even still, I think we need to give it five more minutes. So we'll just sit here and see if anything else shows up. I really wonder, could that be the fifth elk from the herd? Because it was a new trail. Obviously, it's not the one that we shot and have yet to track. And he seems to be by himself, so maybe that was the case. Gotta be careful with that. When you get that, when you run up against the tree, in single player, I believe it's fine. But we're in multiplayer, as that has seemingly been the best for trophy animals for us as of late. And in multiplayer, it does something where it actually spooks the animals, so... Gotta be sure not to do that, but that's two more kills. We should be good, especially if we take it slow to go and track down the other elk. And in the end, it ended up netting us one extra bull and an extra buck. Neither of them were huge. We'll take the GM and the bonus kills, kind of, again, get them out of the way so we don't run into their tracks or calls later in the hunt. One 91 bull and 108 buck. And we'll get back to that track. I kind of think he ran this way, so we do still need to take it slow. Well, on the plus side, the elk never turned up the hill the way I thought, so we had no chance of actually spooking him while hunting the other things, but a 25 minute wound time. Pretty much everything we did up to tracking him was necessary to have him expired at the time we got here, but at least we got that, and we did use our fast travel to get to there, so we'll just kind of start working our way up into the mountains now, but I think we're at like four whitetail bucks and three bull elk already? We're actually not doing too bad. Well, that is interesting we had two heavy tracks and they're both kind of decent bulls although actually i'm not so sure that's the other track we had there was one up the 480 and one up the 490 that is obviously one of the two i don't actually think this is so there's two 300 bulls here plus potentially one more that's kind of hiding if he is he's got to be resting up on the hill so i don't know did we just take that one with the inline and kind of see what happens. I'd rather confirm that there's not another big one, but there's not really a good way to do that. So I guess we'll go for an inline shot. 
If we had any sort of repeating rifle, we might be able to get the smaller one here too, but I think that'll be all good. This guy could be in the area of maybe 340 or so. But hopefully it's going to take him down. Didn't look like he ever moved. And then either we'll get back on the tracks or confirm if the other track has changed weights, but I can't imagine up to 410 could possibly be the same one. It's a track that we did have, but I think I picked up more than one of each, so there's another one that was either hidden or something. That short time is going to cost us, and only two back times kind of hurts as well, but let's see, double lunged him. 311 score, I thought he was better than that, so we won't be taxing him. Actually kind of makes me think the other one wasn't 300 plus. And then what are the odds that there would have been three just big frame elk in the same herd? I mean, I think that's the track there. And yeah, it never changed weight, so he must have been resting up here, and hopefully it won't take too long to track him down. This is genuinely odd. We have the same herd coming back, including that smaller bull, which I'm actually not so sure is smaller. The frame's better than I thought. But there's no sign of the other one. I mean, it was with this herd, so it should be here, but it's just not around. And unfortunately, with the cable back, no matter what we do, we're gonna spook the cow. There's a chance, I guess, that the bull somehow hangs around if we can maybe drop this guy. That seems incredibly unlikely, but I mean, got an arrow in him and maybe we can figure that out. I just don't know where he would be. All of that for a very average bull elk. He actually came in behind us, so I don't know where he was. And actually, I guess we didn't load the muzzleloader from the previous one. If he sticks around, we'll go ahead and take him, but not exactly going to be a tragedy if he takes off. He does have a spot, and he is going to take off, so at least we know he's not that big. And we can focus on the other one, which luckily we did take the shot, because that ends up being way better. But the good news is, I do think we ended up with two 300 plus bulls, although this guy might be there just barely. Only because some of the short times are kind of even. Was a right long shot 292. If he had the longer times here, he would have made it, but even still, not nearly the 400 that we're after, but at least a couple of decent ones. So I think actually, can we fast travel again? We'll try down here. It's been a good spot for us as a late. If we don't get a call or don't get an elk call, we'll still stay here and call a little bit and then start to move towards the river to the west of us. And I guess on the bright side, we did manage to bring in one more bull, another kind of heavy one, for a really unimpressive rack, but a chance to maybe use the 45 again, only because we're going to be moving out from here anyway, and I think it'll be okay to spook things, plus these cows are going to go absolutely everywhere, so it's probably just about no different. So, I've actually never done this with the 45. Figured it would be capable to do that, though it does appear that we just got spied. I don't think we should have expected it to hit hard, to be honest, but it did get a lung. 166 score, just another shot for the stallion at least. And we'll, well, I mean, <laughs> I guess we could try to get this too. Or is she going to make her way out of there? I wanted to get a brain shot because the lung shot angle kind of is removed. Well, we'll just make sure she goes down. Not exactly the plan, but... We'll take that as well. We got intestines with that follow-up. And not that we're gaining anything from it, but it was stuck there and we just fired the gun anyway. And fittingly enough, we're kind of right back to where we started this on. A 45 to 70 whitetail buck. And I think we'll take that with the inline. It's going to be our last kill. And just kind of falling in line with the others. Don't really want to be tracking it down from a poor cable back hit. Especially when it's not all that big, but... We actually got some decent use out of both the inline and the 45 today, although I should have loaded the proper ammo before doing that, but in the end it really doesn't make any difference. But we did manage to get at least the one whitetail buck that is going to be a new lodge edition. 176 I think he was, and again, makes him the second biggest one in the series thus far. So we'll fast travel back, we'll get the inline and the whitetail on the wall, and we'll take a look. And you know, it definitely does kind of help things out. We now have a 176, a 171, and a 177 on the wall for typical whitetail. We've got the non-tip down here and the piebald from last time. So 
we're getting a little somewhere. Still have a couple of the big plaques to fill and still obviously some of these elk it would be nice to improve on. We've got 330s, I think one of these, yeah, 306 from Settlers. And again, we could have made a tiny improvement on that today, but I'd like to at least get 330 or 340 if we're going to replace that. But getting a little somewhere nice to get another decent buck. And I think next time we come to Redfeather Falls, which probably won't be in the next episode, I'm going to try to remember to fill the bear feeder because that's another thing. We don't have this platform filled with anything at all, but for now, I think that's going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.